churches on Sunday, right? We learn from these churches that we learn from on Sundays, but we never question. We never question what it is about this Bible that's being said or being taught. Do you, when you read it, do you see yourself in the Bible? No, oh, that means some understanding is missing. Some understanding is missing. We're showing you who you are right now. It's missing because nobody told you who you truly were. Right. Nobody with understanding was ever able to teach you. Now, now you today still don't have no understanding. But today is changing. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. We never finished our point in Deuteronomy 28. Let's continue to go over more curses. Let's go over 48. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seat forever. You hear that? It says the curses are going to be upon the children of Israel for a sign and a wonder. And it's going to be upon your seed for how long? Forever. Forever. We've always been in different captivity. This isn't the first time we've been in somebody's servitude. This ain't the first time. We've done this in the past. Bring it up. We're in somebody's captivity right now today. Right. Absolutely. That brings it up to modern day. That's bringing it up to modern day. And we're not really getting paid. We're just getting maintained. Because all the riches that's in this earth, that's yours. You shouldn't have to get up every day at a, an alarm clock and hurry up and run off, jump on the bus, and hope that you make it so you can get to work. That's not your lot in life. The Lord said, I want you to kick your feet up. I want you to be careful. You understand that? He wanted, he, he want, he wanted to do that. Read. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. The curses will identify the children of Israel forever. Read. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God. We don't serve God. We serve other nations, or we serve ourselves. Read. With joyfulness and with gladness of heart. We had everything, right? And we're not glad to serve the Lord for everything that we've been given, right? We wake up every day, and we go to these churches on Sunday. Right? We learn from these churches that we learn from on Sundays. But we never question. We never question what it is about this Bible that's being said or being taught. Do you when you read it, do you see yourself in the Bible? No. Oh, that means some understanding is missing. Some understanding is missing. We're showing you who you are right now. It's missing because nobody told you who you truly were. Right. Nobody with understanding was ever able to teach you. Now, now you today still don't have no understanding. But today is changing. Up until this point, you didn't have any understanding of the Bible. You know how I know? Because of the simple way that you dress. The simple things that you do to your hair. The coloring that you do to your hair. That's not natural to your hair. Your hair grows black. Your hair grows black. Green. For the abundance of all things. For the abundance of all things. We had long, luxurious, beautiful hair. Our women did. Read uh, 53 or 56 to Ashley Temple. Read. We, we, we serve the Lord's. Right, right. You okay, sis? What's wrong? What's the matter? Hey, sis, it's not, don't think of it as antagonism. Think of it as a reflection. I'm holding up a mirror to show you how you look versus what the Bible says. Right? I'm going to show you what the Bible says. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 56. The tender and delicate woman among you. Yes, the description of our sister. sister. The scripture explains that our sisters are tender and delicate. Right? If you look around Chicago today, it's not a lot of tender and delicate women in Chicago. A lot of them, a lot of them are rough. A lot of them are tough. A lot of them don't really know their place. A lot of them think that they won't level with the men. They even will square up and try to swing over there. We had a sister up here earlier. You seen her? She was riled up. That's not a tender or a delicate woman, is she? You a tender and delicate woman? Free. The tender and delicate woman among you. 
which would not adventure to set the soul of her foot upon the ground. You hear that? Our sisters, before we came into captivity, that spirit was, I ain't got to work. My Lord can take care of me. They kicked their feet up. Wherever they needed to go, they were carrying Today, our sisters, as tender and delicate as they think they might be, they are forced to walk on the ground now. That was something simple that the Lord gave us that we didn't appreciate. Our sisters didn't appreciate that. What you're doing right now is a result of what happened to us. Right now, what we're trying to do is get our people to realize how special we are, how special the Lord says we are, how far we have fallen, right? We've fallen. Now, we are forced to walk on these feet. That's just an inevitability. But we're showing you through the curse the difference between what we used to have and what we have now. You understand that? You, know, you shouldn't be using it. Of course, the scriptures, you should be just kicked up, laid up, chilling. Learning how to be a Proverbs 31 woman or a righteous woman so that you can teach the next sisters how to actually be a righteous woman for them all to help continue our nation grow and build. Because as it is now, our nation not growing. We just a whole bunch of separated people. What we need is we need unity. We don't have the unity. All right? Read. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, and we gladness of heart. We were joyful when we were glad to serve the Lord, so the Lord made a lot of our tender and delicate sisters. He made them hard. They have to now fulfill the role of a man. You understand that? On Father's Day, what does a lot of our single sisters say? I'm the daddy. No, you're not, sister. No, you're not. But they have to fulfill that role because a lot of our men have lost their minds. Right? Yeah. Read. For the abundance of all things. We had gold, we had riches, we had food. What's the grocery store? What's, what, what is a restaurant? We didn't need any of that. These things are destroying us. We had our grocery store in our vineyards next to our property. We had land. We wasn't bunched in and having neighbors right next door to you. We didn't have that. We had large, vast amounts of fields. That was ours. This land was our brothers. It was taken from them. They didn't appreciate it. And they didn't serve the Lord the way he designed them to serve. So he took it from them. Right. Read. I suffer these curses too. I suffer these curses too. I'm just showing you how far we fell. I'm not saying I'm better than you. We're in the same boat. Only difference between me and you is I got time studying the Bible according to a teacher that's over me. You don't have a teacher over you. Right? We want to make sure you get a teacher over you so that you can come back to your royalty. Right. Come back to your glory. Right. All right? Read. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemy, which the Lord shall send against thee. In you said we have to work or we have to serve punch and clock, right? That's what the Lord's talking about right here. We had to at first work for him, cultivate the land for him, do what he said do. We didn't want to do that, we didn't like doing that, we wanted to do what the other nations was doing. The other nations was having orgies, the other nations was getting high, the other nations was destroying their body, killing each other. We was like, hey, that looks fun. So he said, we would rather do what they're doing instead of what the Lord said do. And now, what do we have to do? Serve thy enemy. We have to serve our enemies. It's going to be very specific who this enemy is. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. We read about this earlier. Who put that on our necks when we came up these boats here in America? Who owned the majority of these establishments? The Lord said they are who are what? Enemy. We're serving our who? Enemy. Our friends wouldn't do this to us. Our friends wouldn't keep us in a perpetual cycle of de de destruction. We've been crying for reparations forever to repair the decayed up state of our people. Nobody cares about that. You got the Jewish people, they're getting reparations. The Japanese people, when they got the Hiroshima drop on them, they're getting reparations. Germany, Ger because we're destroyed. The law said that'll be one of the curses, right? We. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. For how long? How long would a, a yoke of iron be upon our neck? Until 
he have destroyed thee. You hear that? And so he has destroyed us. Look at his neck. You see what's on his face? That's uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 48. These are clues to tell us who we are in the Bible. To tell you that the children of Israel will lose their mind in the last days. That they will need the Spirit of God to come to them to wake them up and bring them back to their glory. Our glory is the Father. He is our glory. And we're not worshiping him as he stated for the first place. We want to celebrate Easter. We want to break the Sabbath. We want to go and buy, sell, and shop just like everybody else is doing, but we're special. We're not common. We shouldn't be breaking the Sabbath day. Let's learn how to keep the Sabbath day holy after we finish Deuteronomy 28. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, and he shall put a bridle upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Jesus was on our necks. Are they on our necks now? Do we have a yoke of iron on our neck now? So what does that indicate according to that scripture? What does that indicate? He, the scripture says, He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. You don't have the iron on your neck no more. So what does that mean? That means that you have been destroyed. Yes. He shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he has destroyed thee. We are already destroyed. You want to know in what capacity we're destroyed? Listen, this is how we destroy it. The book of Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. But he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. We get money. We know how to get money, right? We know how to live from day to day. We got a lot of entertainers that have skills and talents. We got a lot of people with PhDs, right? You would consider them destroyed, right? But they're destroyed because they don't have the knowledge of God. Right? right? He said you're supposed to come to the priest, and the priests are supposed to keep knowledge. And knowledge is supposed to be at their lips. What are some things that a priest are supposed to speak? Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge is the Bible. Alright? You got that Hosea? Wait. The book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. That's what they're destroyed from, sis. Tell her they destroyed from what? The lack of knowledge. They're destroyed from the lack of knowledge. All right? And the lack of knowledge is that you are the children of God. The, you are. You, in black, Hispanics, and Native Indians, you are the true children of God. The Lord said you are gods, but you would die like men. You would die like men because you're not keeping up the ordinances and the statute. Thou should not kill. You say the hell with it, I got to get kicked back. You say the hell with, with, I don't care who he is. He killed my, 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 my homie. He smoked my little homie. I got to get get back. This is murder cap, this is murder city. And we don't care about the laws of God as a people. We think the laws of God is outdated or anti antiquated. We think the laws of God can't help us get money. Well, you got to understand why you want money. What What is that money going to do for you individually? Nothing but help you and allow you to fulfill lusts and desires. We have to change our mind and our heart on how we feel about certain things. Simple things as my neighbor. A lot of people can't even look at one another without them feeling uneasy in their spirit. I should be able to look at you. I should be able to talk to you. I should be able to hold a conversation with you without you thinking I want something from you. I should be able to tell you the difference between right and wrong without you thinking I'm judging you. We're reading the Bible here. We're trying to build up our nation. We're trying to bring back the unity. Right now, there is no unity. We're scattered in different gangs. We're scattered in different religious systems. Nobody's actually learning and teaching the Bible. We're learning and teaching the Bible, sir. We're learning and teaching the Bible, brother. We're showing our people what, what's true. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. 
nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. Oh, no!